I'm going to get a little personal with you, uh, because everywhere I go, and in fact, it happened today on the street. Griff Jenkins, my old pal from Fox, who's helping me out today, Griff and I are walking down the street, and a fellow gets out of his car and immediately starts asking about my health. People ask this every single day, and I cannot tell you what a wonderful thing it is. I, I know a lot of folks say, oh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm afraid to ask you about this. Folks, I'm not shy about this. I got cancer, and a lot of people have cancer. But I also have the benefit of people all over this country who just out of the goodness of their hearts have kept me in their thoughts and their prayers, and it has made me stronger, it has made me happier, and it has made me, to the extent that I can be, well. I'm still undergoing chemo. As a matter of fact, I got a chemo session this afternoon. For those of you who think that this is one of these things where you go in and they, they sort of extract your soul and you turn out green and pale, no. This is pretty user-friendly, what I got today. I go in for a half hour. I leave. Which is good because I got a band gig tonight. I got a band gig tomorrow night. I got, you know, I've, I've got my life as an old far rock and roller that I still got to maintain. So I got a lot of music to play the next couple of days. But let me tell you a couple of things about what I have learned living with cancer. Maybe the most important thing I have learned is that all of the old lessons, all of them, are true. The things that matter in life, your family, your faith, the people you love. Those probably loom larger in my life than ever before, and it makes me happy. I love it. You find yourself not really learning new stuff, but beginning to grasp the old lessons, the the light bulb goes off. And you realize a lot of times when somebody tries to stand between you and your family, it's like, no, I'm not going to do that. When you have somebody who is uh, trying to get you to do things that are going to waste your time, but, but may not, in fact, be the highest and best use of your talents, you, you learn to say no. But the other thing you learn is that there's something really extraordinary about this country. For everybody who wants to argue that the United States is a place of greed and selfishness, or that the United States somehow has made the world a, a less decent or safe place, you're full of it. You don't know what you're talking about. The one thing that I have learned over the years is that the American people are incredibly generous. One of the great things about this country is we are filled up with people who are looking for an excuse to do something nice for somebody else. We've had people show up at our front door with cookies and flowers. They've showed up with cards. But a lot of times, even somebody giving a little tiny piece of advice, a lot of ex-cancer patients have been really helpful to me. We have all encountered a period in our, our life where suddenly this big gap has opened up in front of us and we have no idea how we're going to get across. All we see is blackness and bleakness and we say to ourselves, what do I do next? Well, I'll tell you what you do. You share it. You realize that out there you got friends and nothing makes a friend feel better than being able to reach out and help when you're in need. The one thing I've learned, for instance, about Dealing with cancer and dealing with illnesses. Don't try to hide it. You know, don't, don't worry about that. There are going to be people out there who freak out. Don't worry about them. Because the folks who freak out are, you know, sooner or later they'll come back to your senses. But, but instead, sit back and realize that there are a lot of other folks that you never imagined who are going to step forward in ways that are huge and heroic or small and thoughtful, but in very wonderful ways. Let you realize that whatever you're doing in this life, you are not alone. As as lonely as you may feel, as isolated as you may feel, as frightened as you may feel what you're facing, you're not alone. You got people out there who are trying to help you. Face-to-face contact with somebody, real compassion, real love, that's what holds us together. That's one of the things I've learned about being sick. Another thing that I've learned is that we live in an age of miracles. Here I am. I got stage four cancer. In the old days, when somebody said stage four, bang, what did you do? The, the, the breath went out of you and you thought, I'm dead. Well, it's not that way anymore. I am lucky enough to, to be under a regimen right now. I, I take chemo pills five days a week. I do a chemo session every three weeks, and I, I do a CAT scan every nine weeks. So we keep our eyes on this stuff. But we're holding serve right now. We've got cancer in remission. It's probably going to grow again. If that happens, we got stuff on the shelf. We're ready to hit it with. But I'm telling you, folks, things that seemed absolutely impossible just a few years ago, all of a sudden are possible. My mom died of cancer when I was a kid, when I was 17. They didn't even know she had it in her liver until she was dead. I mean, it's one of these things where in the old days, you didn't know what you had inside your body and you didn't know how to treat it. Now they've got the ability to track little tiny growths. 
and to go after them. So for those of you out there who have friends who have been stricken with cancer, I know you got a lot of them. Do a couple of things. Number one, encourage them to reach out because there's a lot of love and support and you need it. Number two, talk to a lot of doctors. Don't get yourself all snarled up in websites because a lot of times you get crazy stuff there. Talk to a good, competent doc and find out what's out there because there are miracles just waiting to be discovered. Number three, also understand that the people are going to go through peaks and valleys. Don't worry about it. You know, you enter the valley of the shadow of death, but you've got to realize that on the other side, there's still a green, sunny pasture for many folks. And even for those who are not going to make it out, there are the consolations of faith and the reality of love. Because when all is said and done in this life, it doesn't matter what you do. The question is, who did you touch? Who did you love? What difference did you make? Well, I don't know what difference I've made, but I'll tell you what, a lot of you have made a real difference in my life. It has made it better and wonderful and richer and happier. So when people ask how I'm doing, I'm telling you, I tell you, I'm doing great. I am happier than I've ever been. I mean, I'm a little raspy today because I'm recovering from the flu. I don't give a rip. Hell, I've been through cancer. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been through the White House briefing room. I, there's nothing out there that's going to scare me. The only thing I know is that now what lays before me is a challenge to try to make the most of every moment and to do the best I can. That's what I'm going to give you. You're in the no-spin zone with Bill O'Reilly.